Mr. Invest a lot. Welcome back to the channel, baby. So today's gonna be some straight up content. It's not gonna be too long, but I wanna talk about a current project that we're being used on. And when I mean being used, we're being used for everything. So in terms of the application, we're gonna be talking about discovery today. It's more about discovery. I want to talk about what PacBio is currently retweeting and what they're celebrating and how I think the magic and success of the Vertebrate Genome Project is going to boost research and discovery for bio-nanogenomics and how we can generate a massive consumable revenue just from discovery and research. Before we get into it, if you're new on the channel, my name is Miguel. I do loads of videos on bio-nanogenomics on NNDM. I look for these juicy growth stocks. Always remember, none of this is financial advice. It's for entertainment only. If you're able to support the channel, please click the join button above my head. But if you're unable to, just you hitting the like and clicking subscribe is enough for me. Drop me some comments down below and tell me what you think. So some of you guys may already know that BioNanoGenomics is currently being utilized for this project called the Vertebrate Genome Project. This project is actually ran by the Vertebrate Genome Lab over on Twitter, you can see here, and they're based in Rockefeller University. So the Vertebrate Genome Laboratory, Rockefeller University, from some of my earlier videos, you may have seen a sapphire machine in the corner at their lab over there looking saucy. So their aim is to map out complete error-free genomes or near error-free genomes for 70,000 vertebrate species. A vertebrate is an animal of a large group distinguished by possession of a backbone or spinal column, including mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fishes. Professor Wikipedia says there's 69,963 species so basically 70k and this is all possibly consumable revenue for us. But how do you know that big daddy? Well, if you go to the vertebrategenomeproject.org, you'll see there's a little button here called the genome arc. And here you can see all the vertebrate genome project data, the raw reads, meto assemblies. And once you click into this genome arc, you'll see the data that they've collected for all species so far. So this is the genome arc. This is where they collect all the data and it shows you there's some that say all data, curated assembly, meto assembly. Some of them have just some, a little bit of data. But what I found so far is I've clicked through so many of these animals, so many of these fish. For example, let's take a click of this bird, Apus Apus. When you clickety click inside that Apus Apus, you'll see the raw data here. They all contain bio nano. So they need bio nano genomics optical mapping in order to get the kind of full picture in terms of having, you know, a complete reference genome for the species. So they're going to get this complete reference genome and they need bio nano genomics sapphire in order to map it out. So we've looked at the apples, apples. Let's look what's next. The Aquila Chrysatos Chrysatos. Click that. As we can see here, 10x, bio nano, dovetail genomics, and pack bio. Bio Nano Genomics is in this once again. And as you scroll down, you'll see that all these different species that they've currently mapped out all use Bio Nano Genomics Sapphire, Bio Nano's optical mapping in order to get the complete genome. So if we scroll down, we get to, you know, let's get to the blue whale. I saw the blue whale here earlier. The blue whale, the huge big daddy of the ocean. They actually use Illumina with this as well. So when they map this out, they use 10x Bio Nano Dovetail Illumina and Pack Bio. Look at the size here, the coverage. In terms of bases, we're talking about huge quantities, vast amounts of data generated by Bio Nano, more than all the others. So if we see here, 1,452.9 gigabase pairs, a coverage of 469.63x. They've used Bio Nano Genomics optical mapping to get inside everything, man. Oops, not inside there, big boy. And twerk, 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 twerk. So these are the species they've currently mapped out so far. But I want to take you back a couple years to 2019. This was when the Vertebrate Genome Project had announced their second data set of the largest number of chromosomal level genome assemblies of vertebrates. As you can see below my head, they had 101 genomes. Now let's talk about the bigger picture. The bigger picture involves 8.7 million species of plants and animals in existence, but only 1.2 million species have been identified and described so far, which are insects. This is the National Geographic Channel reporting in 2019. So they said that this means millions of other organisms organisms remain a complete mystery. In terms of insects, take a look at this. They're actually selling edible grasshoppers now, edible crickets, fit for human consumption, because we're looking for new ways to feed the world, feed the earth, and we got insect protein now. So alongside plants and animals, we actually have 5.1 million fungal species according to this article here. Other articles say there's about 3.8 million fungal species. So there's all of these that we need to map out also. And if you wanted to go a step further in terms of bacteria, there is 5 million trillion trillion 
bacteria on Earth. This is an estimation from this website called sciencing.com back in 2017. Then I'm going to take you to viruses. So in terms of viruses, apparently, according to the National Geographic channel, this is by Catherine Wu, published last year in 2020, there are more viruses than stars in the universe. And apparently there are quadrillion, quadrillion individual viruses exist on Earth. A quadrillion, quadrillion? So say, for example, we wanted to just discover and map out all the species of plants and animals, and it's estimated that there's 8.7 million of them. BioNanogenomics managed to get its consumable chip down to a cost of $100 a pop. We are talking just for discovery, $870 million. That's in terms of chips, if they use a BioNano chip for every single species that they map out. Optical mapping is super useful, and I actually found an article to prove that. So this article, um, this was by Luigi Faino, Michael F. Seidel, is single molecule real-time sequencing combined with optical mapping yields completely finished fungal genome. And they stated that they use PacBio for their long reads, but they didn't state who they use for optical mapping. Combination of PacBio generated long reads and optical mapping can be used to generate complete and gapless assemblies of fungal genomes. The same with all of these, you can't do it without optical mapping. Now 870 million, wow, great. But what if we needed to map out bacteria, drug resistant bacteria? What if we needed to map out lots of different bacteria because we discover something that's useful with bacteria? We can genetically engineer these bacteria. Are we looking at five million trillion trillion? And what about fungal species? We're seeing a lot of information coming in about psychedelics and mental health and that some compounds found in magic mushrooms could actually be good at reducing symptoms of depression. In terms of bacteria that is currently resistant to drugs in the hospitals, we need to find a way to target these bacteria and reduce infection. But also all of these viruses that will continue to evolve, we've seen it with 85 plus variants of C19. There is a quadrillion quadrillion individual viruses existing on earth. And in terms of animals, why do we map them out? Why are we sequencing this lobster? How do most lobsters stay cancer free newly sequenced genome could reveal their secrets apparently lobsters do not get cancer they don't grow weak with age and they can live up to 100 years unless they're on my plate baby and with the current vertebrate genome project 70,000 of these are these guys currently paying 450 dollars a pop and they're buying these genome bundles and in terms of the discovery research you know consumable revenue that's going to be reoccurring every single year is this conservative this right here 500 million dollars to 1.1 billion per year is it a conservative figure because not only is there so many different species and living organisms to map out but we're constantly researching into comorbidities so guys let me know your thoughts and feelings i'm going to show you an analysis in the next video from one of our guys over on stock twits and he was showing basically if every hospital in the world had a sapphire machine and his analysis was showing consumable revenue from each one of those we've seen it proven time and time again that alongside next to these sequences they need optical genome mapping in order to map out the full genome. Is this 10,000 Sapphire systems also conservative as a number? And with our chief financial officer Christopher Stewart coming over from Tesla, Tesla is known for constantly under-promising and over-delivering. Is this what they've done here with their investor relations presentation? Is this 2.6 billion to 3.8 billion market opportunity conservative? Let me know your breakdown and calculations in the comments, but I'm going to be showing you another model in the next video. If you're able to support the channel, please do. If you want to send me a donation, or a tip uh, in my description box you'll see my paypal link there i will never send you a whatsapp number in the comments and always remember this is not financial advice it's for entertainment only please hit the like click subscribe and drop me a comment down below and i'll catch you in the next video mr <coughs> oh hot damn mr investor lot over and out baby